listening to Saturday with Ted on News Talk 1010. Thanks, sir. 249 at News Talk 1010. There's a contract expiry date of August 31st, which is not far away. Support staff employed by Ontario's 24 colleges will then be in a legal position to walk off the job come September 1st. The 8,000-plus workers represented, represented by the Ontario Public Service Employees Union, OPSU, have been in contract talks since June. Rod Bemister is the chair of OPSU's, OPSU's college support staff bargaining team. He joins me on the line. Good afternoon to you, sir. Mr. Bemister. Yes. Yes, hi. How are you? It's Ted Wellison. Not too bad. How are you? I'm very well. Can you uh, talk to me? What, what are the issues on the table right now? Uh, there's still a number of issues on the table. Um, since the beginning of June, when we started negotiations, uh, there's been no movement. Uh, no significant progress has taken place. Uh, there's takeaways and concessions on the part of the employee, or uh, sorry, on the part of the employer still on the table. Um, there's two-tier benefits that they'd like to introduce, uh, two-tier employment for, for new employees coming into the colleges. Um, and then there's our proposals in regards to job security benefits and wages that are still outstanding. Okay, let's, let's get a definition here of exactly who are support staff. Sp- support staff in the Ontario colleges uh, basically represent anything that is uh, not teaching in the college or managing employees. So admission staff, uh, housekeeping staff, cleaning staff, maintenance staff, registration staff, sports staff. Uh, so anything that's not within the classroom. Okay. And there are 8,000 of, uh, of those workers approximately? For colleges, correct? That's correct. And so, what what is it that you're that you would like? Well, basically, the the fight that we're in, uh, obviously, is against the two tiered uh, type of employment that the colleges would like to introduce. Uh, we believe that we have good jobs right now, um, and we'd like to keep them good jobs, uh, not just for us today but for the students that graduate in the future, that they can go into the good jobs. When we went around to the uh, colleges across the province, there were a number of employees that had been college students. So we know that those that are in the college right now will uh, eventually join our ranks as employees, and, and we'd like to keep the, the good jobs and the good benefits that we have today for them tomorrow. So are you looking for a raise specifically? Uh, Yes, we do have a a wage proposal on the table. How much of an increase? uh, We have asked for 3% Mm -hmm. per year. Have they counter-offered or they haven't offered anything at all? They have not offered anything at all at this point. Okay. And and the two-tier proposal that they have, are, are you currently... Uh, work under two-tier benefits? No, we do not. Uh, all the employ- all the benefits that we have for employees uh, cover all the employees that are in the colleges right now. And those benefits would include uh, health? Health, sick time, um, probationary period, uh, part-time service for probation, uh, and uh, vacation entitlements as well. Okay. And so how uh, are they proposing, well, I'm not proposing, but you're, you're suggesting that they're not going to be offering this this time around? Well, on the table, they, they've put forward uh, to review proration of part-time service for probation for new employees, for an example. And, and we have, at this point, since there's been no significant uh, uh, talks, We have no idea what that means, Uh, but it does introduce a second tier for new employees, so their probationary period would be different. Uh, They want to review the annual vacation entitlement for new employees so that uh, the new employees would have a different 
a vacation entitlement. Um, they also want to look at sick time benefits and the accumulation of the days that we currently have in the maximum carry forward for new employees. Do you have, do you have, do you accumulate sick days and carry them over into the next year? Yes, we do. I, I never understood that concept, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's like, uh, you know, uh, so some poor sap uh, has the, uh, the, the, the poor, uh, the bad luck uh, that, that he gets sick um, and because of that, he can't carry over. But somebody's fortunate enough not to be uh, sick gets a bonus the following year. Why, why does that exist? Well, it's really not a bonus when you look at it, because at the end of the day, uh, if we leave the college system, uh, there is no payout or buyout of it. It's more of an insurance that if we do have the unfortunate uh, incident that we do get ill, and it's a long-term illness up to the point where we can go on long-term disability, this, this would cover us for that. You know, the average person is sitting there shaking their head right now saying, what? Because that was one of the big problems that people had with the, with the Teachers Federation, was that they're accumulating. And I had a friend who, but when, but, but when he retired, the first year of his retirement, he was in, he, he made full-time salary because he has, he'd accumulated a year's worth of sick days. And that's why the sick days that we have right now is different than that, because we don't get to take them away. Um, so it, it may build up, but at the end of the day, we carry nothing out of the college system or the pockets of anybody for those days that we haven't used. So you can't take that into your retirement with you, as, as, as the, it was in the case of my friend then? That's correct. But in the meantime, you could have somebody who's healthy for five, six, ten years in a row suddenly taking eight, nine, ten weeks worth of vacations, which, some, uh, not, which somebody has to cover. Not vacation. It would be sick time that they would carry over. And, and that is correct. Um, the changes to the sick time happened a number of years ago. Um, and it, like I said, it was more of an insurance policy than anything else. Uh, we, we don't want to see anything happen to our members, uh, obviously. Uh, but we've negotiated that so that in the case that they do get ill and are off for an extended period of time, that that would carry forward. Mm -hmm. All right, so the, the, the contract expires on August 31st, and you are um, in a legal position to go walk off the job the following day. Uh, in all likelihood, is that about to happen? Well, given the, the state of negotiations right now, um, and the very limited progress we've made to date, we're, we're not optimistic that we can get an agreement uh, by September 1st. Mm -hmm. um, we'd, we'd urge the students to get in contact with their college presidents, their colleges, and tell them to get back to the table and to get a deal that, that's negotiated as soon as possible. I mean, that's what... We want to do. We want to go to the, the table and we want to, to get a negotiated contract. Um, however, given the, what has happened with uh, college management and their enthusiasm to, to get that uh, contract done, uh, we can't see that happening anytime soon. Well, for the benefit of students mostly, uh, um, I hope this thing all, um, all gets worked out. I appreciate your time. Uh that you've taken with us, and say hi to my old friend, Mr. Hamara. Okay, no problem. Thank we, God, we, we went to Ukrainian school together. You might want to mention that to him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Rod. Okay, take care. All right, Rod Bemster is chair of the Opsu College Support Staff Bargaining Team, and the uh, gentleman that I r referenced is uh, also, uh, he's the spokes. I can't remember, he's the, uh, the media guy for, for Opsu. That's what he is. That's going to do it for another week there, Mr. Bill. Man, big show. Great show today.
Uh, we had a lot of uh, interesting, uh, different a of, stuff. A lot of topics, man. Hated that food, though. Wasn't that awful? Oh, man. Painful, <laughs> man. I'm so full oh. right now. Hey, Shane. Hey, Beef Shane. it up. Beef it up. Shane's sitting there you're ready to go <laughs> to the news. What would you, you think of that pulled pork oh, sandwich? It's great, man. You can't go wrong Wasn't with that. that? Oh, you so know, good. These guys are so spoiled in the newsroom <laughs> I, now. When I come in here on a Sunday morning, nobody says hi. It's, uh, oh, well, what are we eating today, Ted? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we love your show, Ted. Yeah, I appreciate that. It comes doesn't come from the heart. It comes from the stomach, but I'll accept that anyway. <laughs> What are you doing this week? Uh, isn't the stomach the way to the heart? Yeah, I think it is, yeah. Uh, what am I doing this week? Yeah. I have no idea. You I'm going golf? to see Blue Rodeo tonight. Oh, good for and you. And then man. I'm playing in, uh, in, a, in a golf tournament for the uh, Canada-Ukraine Chamber of Commerce on Monday. And by the way, there's a great event going on down at Centennial Park today. It's uh, Ukrainian Day. So if you want to get stuffed nice. with great food and see some great dancers and some sporting activities, go down to Centennial Park. Uh, it's, a, it's a fabulous affair. I wish I could go, but... Can I can only do one thing at a time? Okay. And, In demand. And poorly at that. What about you? Anything exciting this week? Absolutely nothing. Okay. I'm well, just going to enjoy it. Enjoy yourself. End of summer. Thank you to Tony Tedesco, and uh, thank you to Dan Jacobs. Thank you all for listening. We will return next Saturday. Uh, we have no sick days, uh, just sick thoughts. But remember, fill out your organ donor card. You too could change your life. Have a great night.